Hey everybody, I'm Dave Carger here at the Entertainment Weekly and People Video Studio at the Toronto International Film Festival. I'm here with two of the stars of The Fablemans, Gabriel LaBelle and Seth Rogen. Hi guys. Hi, how, how are, are you? you? Great, how are you? There we go. Well, I'm great. <laughs> but what I want to know is how it must have felt last night at your premiere. I was in the room and the audience response was like through the roof. Gabriel, what went through your mind when you heard the audience reacting to you and this whole film? I was in a disassociative state. <laughs> I, um, I don't know, I, I, I tried to stay really mellow before it all happened and I knew that it was gonna be very overwhelming but I had like a whole speed dating press day leading up to it so oh. I was really trying to like stay, like I texted my parents before we like all were in my hotel room about before we left. I was like, you can't talk to me about it. Like, <laughs> you gotta let me like, let me just chill and breathe. And I was chill, and I was breathing, and it, I, I really enjoyed the movie. That helped that it was a really good movie, <laughs> and um, that applause was more than I expected. That's great. And more than anybody could ever hope for, really. Seth, you must have had an idea in your head, like, what it would be like to work with Steven Spielberg. Maybe you've even talked to friends who have worked with him. How did it compare to maybe what preconceptions you had in your mind? Um, it was, it was unique because it was, it felt like a unique Steven Spielberg movie. Um, and I think in my head, I guess if I ever thought I was going to be in a Steven Spielberg movie, I imagine myself running from things or likely getting crushed <laughs> by something or eaten early on. Um, but this, it was so different and it, it was clear from the first conversations we had that it, it wasn't just, not that there is just another mm -hmm. Steven Spielberg movie, but mm -hmm. that it was especially personal and um, especially meaningful and especially complicated for him in a lot of ways. Mm. And so it was really unlike anything I've ever done. Um, kind of watching this brilliant man who you really look up to, like be in the moment, figuring out how to tell his story, what's important to him, what isn't, um, and get excited about new things in the moment as they happen, remembering things as we're filming, oh yeah, my uncle did that all the time. Do that. He always did this. He, and uh, let's get another one where you do that. And it was like these new memories would form and you'd capture them on film uh, in real time almost. Um, yeah, it was unlike, I'll never have another experience like this, you know? Um, yeah. Is it, Gabriel, is it hard to resist the urge, like, not to fan out on Steven Spielberg and just be like, oh my God, I loved that moment in Jurassic Park, or did you just do it? I didn't resist the urge. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, was, I didn't either, yeah. Yeah, no, I mean, you show up to set for the first um, two days where we were shooting all the um, Escape to Nowhere stuff in the desert, and so his editing trailer wasn't there. Normally in between shots or takes or setups, he goes and edits and, and doesn't hang out. And so those first two days, it's really just us hanging out under a tent and the rest of the cast really isn't there. So it's me, Tony, Steven, and Christy hanging out and I'm talking to like Mitch, the A camera operator, who stormed the beaches of Normandy yeah. with a handheld <laughs> camera for saving Private Ryan. Whoa. And it's it's you you can just like so many stories. And we talked about saving Private Ryan a lot when we were making Escape to Nowhere, and so, yeah, you just, you, you have to. If you're, if you're exposed to him for that amount of time, you have to. Yeah, and he's happy to talk about it. He does not put up the... Yeah, he loves he, it. He makes it clear, yeah, he does, he does not seem like someone who's uncomfortable talking. He, he, he is naturally, like, an educator, I think, in a lot of ways, and mm -hmm. he's um, thrilled to share his, his knowledge with you, you know? And he's very much aware of the impact he has. Oh yeah. And 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 he's he so he's He knows how excited we are to hear about it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and that's probably it, yeah. why he doesn't give his phone number to us. Yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> that's why me and Gabe are the only ones who can't contact him. Yeah. So if we wanted to have a Zoom meeting, we had to go through Exactly. our manager to his assistant to Everyone him. Everyone else was like I was texting Steve. I was like you got the number. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was texting Steve. I think Paul was texting Steve. I was texting Steve. Shell's texting Steve. We're not texting Steve. Oh. <laughs> not not at texting all. Gabe and Judd Hershey. <laughs> 
<laughs> that sounds pretty great too, actually. <laughs> you know, you, you talk about this Escape to Nowhere, which is a, a film that your character, Sammy, who's basically the stand-in for Spielberg, is making as a teenager. Um, and there's a great moment during the filming of that film within the film where you, as Sammy, kind of realize that you can actually direct actors and you can actually tell this actor who's playing a soldier, you should act this way and be sad and walk this way. What was it like for you guys to do that particular moment? Because I feel like that must have been a big moment in Steven Spielberg's life to make this realization. And I was wondering if you were kind of channeling any directors that you've worked with as you were playing a director in that scene. Well, I didn't look at it as playing a director. I mean, the, what what it's going on in Sammy's head is he just discovered the film and where his mother is in love with yes. Benny. This guy. <laughs> right <Yeah>. over there. <laughs> and um, so he, he, he's trying to convey to this actor to understand the emotion he wants to see on camera. He wants to see um, represented, which is you feel guilty about destroying the mm. lives of these people that depend on you. And so I want that from you. And so it's not about... You know, the, the scene is written that he's directing him, but it's 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 that bleeds out, and he gets emotional, and this guy hangs on to his every word and really gets it because he gets lost and forgets that he's directing, and he's just telling him, mm. re reflecting on his own life, mm. and it gets through to the guy and and walks away, and in a way, I feel like whether I I I, I don't know how conscious Tony and Steven were about it, but just the, it's, it's, it's setting up the future that he's putting his life mm. into these movies, whether it's the Boy Scouts swimming in Jaws or, you know, in, in, in Close Encounters of the Third Kind or uh, Catch Me If You Can, he puts his life into everything and it's not so obvious. Mm. And I didn't see it as him becoming a director. I just saw it as him dealing with his, with his issues. That's great. Seth, let me ask one question to finish up with. Michelle Williams is so great in this, and you, your character and hers have this strong connection, as we learn in the movie. What was it like for you, while of course staying in character, uh, to be front row to that Michelle Williams performance? Um, it was amazing. I, 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 I was I've been fortunate enough to to make another film with Michelle, where actually she plays my wife who leaves me for another man. Um, so I've been on all sides of this with her. Um, and she's remarkable. And honestly, uh, I think I was actually cast in the film before her. Um, and I, I was very nervous. And then I heard she was cast to play that role and all my nerves went away. And I was like, oh, like she'll do all of it like if I'm just present and and stay with her it, it, it's like it's like playing with Michael Jordan like you're just like how do you help you know how do you set them up to do what they're amazing at how do you not get in the way how do you support them um, and and honestly yeah she she's so good it makes it it makes it easier mm. like you, you just have to be there with her and and try to keep up you know but yeah. um, it, she makes it easy because she's so present and so real. You, you, it, it takes a lot of the the thinking you would maybe be doing mm. um, out of it because she's yeah. just. It's like you're talking to another to this person. Yeah. I love it. Oh, a hundred percent. And Seth got to hang out on set a few times before his shooting started, so we yeah. met and kind of got to know mm. each other. And we rehearsed the scene in the parking lot um, of the of the Boy Scout right after I show Escape to Nowhere and. Mm and there's that moment of me and Michelle, and we're just rehearsing it the night before, and you know, I meet her, I talk to her, whatever, and then Steven says action on the rehearsal, and she just turns on this other person, and it's incredible to watch. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I remember gushing about it to you, and you, the exact same reaction, you're like, oh yeah, she's good. That's yeah, good. and she does just turn it on, like yeah. she'll be, we'll be talking about like Real Housewives, and they're like, action, and she's just like, <laughs> so, like sorry. Like Paul, yeah. You know, like Paul's very in it, and they're like immersed. She, she, yeah, she can flip it on like a light, and, and it's truly remarkable to watch. You all did a great job. Congratulations on a very successful premiere, Gabriel Seth. Great to see you. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Great to see you too. Check it out when it comes out. We'll be back with more interviews from here in Toronto on People N E W. See you soon. <laughs>